Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by the channel. Now I've got a really interesting pattern for you today. This one's called the Cooper Bug. It was created by Jack Cooper in the 1930s. Now he was a New Englander. He created this fly to fish for the brook trout and some of his ponds up there. And the fly was actually so successful for him that he tried to get a patent on it. The patent was rejected because it was too similar to Orly Tuttle's devil bug. So you might have seen this fly. Uh, sometimes it's called a doodle bug or a devil bug or a cooper bug. And there are slight differences to all of those. Now, one interesting note on the cooper bug. I did see an article in Midcurrent. I'll link to it in the description by Edward Tapley. Now, in this article, Tapley talked about the 10 best flies in New England. And the cooper bug was one of them. And Edward Tapley mentions a story that a guy named Bob Elliott, another Mainer, gave a bunch of these cooper bugs to his dad, who was the famed Tap Tapley. Now, if you're a veteran reader of Field and Stream, you might remember Tap Tapley's column called Tap's Tips. Now, I certainly remember it. And Edward Tapley says that his dad called this his favorite all-time searching fly. So the Cooper bug has a pretty strong pedigree. It's almost a 100 year old fly. It's pretty cool looking, very easy to tie, but don't let its simplicity fool you into thinking that this isn't a really effective pattern. So if you've never fished or tied this pattern, I encourage you to. It's really cool looking. I think you'll like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, the Cooper bug, also called a doodle bug or devil bug. Now I'm tying this on a size 12. It's a barbless 2X long nymph hook. And I'm gonna put down a base of black 70 denier UTC all the way to the start of the bend. Now we do have an option here whether you want to tie in your body before the tail. I kinda like tying in the tail first. Um, it gives you a little more flexibility. So the tail and also the wing case is elk hair. Now you can use elk hair or deer hair, just a natural brown hair. I put a fair sized clump of elk hair in here. Let's see if I got it stacked very well. It looks pretty good except for one long hair right there. We'll go ahead and get that one out of the way. Okay, so that is our tail right there and I'm going to catch it in. You have another option here too, long or short. Um, I kind of like it a little bit longer, but uh, I, I think it looks just a little better. Okay, my thread is starting to spread out on me, so what I want to do, clockwise spin right there, a couple of extra wraps. Now, what I like to do here is I'm gonna take one wrap just around the hair. See that? and then take it back down and medium tight right here. Let's see that, okay. That should keep it on top of the, the hook. So I can put a tighter wrap right there and you know, maybe a couple of tight wraps, but before you let it spin around on you, and it, it will start to spin on you if you're not careful, lift this up and put a couple of wraps right up under it. Just tied up under there. And now maybe another tight wrap right here or two. So that should be pretty well locked right there on top of the, the hook. So I'm going to a couple more wraps right here and I'm gonna take my thread back up to where I'm gonna catch in the, the front of this body. Now you have several options here. Chenille, if you go with chenille, you can just make it really any color you want. Uh, you can do peacock curl, you can do regular dubbing. So, and I've seen one tire online, he'll put a straw on it to just hold this back. I don't think that's too necessary. You can just hold it back with your fingers while you kind of, you know, let's see. I don't want that much there. Let's get it caught in just by the tip. Okay, that'll work right there. And I'm gonna leave my thread up here and I'm gonna take this, the wraps down and back. So 
just take your time here. It'll end up giving us about, you know, two layers. So pull this back and then wrap this all the way to the, to the, you know, the tail or the, the back part of this wing case. Now, second layer going back up. Okay, maybe two thread wraps right here to catch this off before we snip off this chenille up front. Now, let's pull this wing case over. Now, be careful here, take your time a little bit. You don't want any of these fibers to really cross. So you try to keep them as parallel as you can right there. And make sure your thread is hanging where you want this to be. I need to take my thread back a couple of turns so I'll have room for the head. So I'm lay my thread is hanging where I want this front of this wing case to be. I'm gonna put a medium wrap down before I really lock it in and check the position. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine right there. So let's go ahead and put one fairly tight wrap, a couple in front of it, and now we can just put some really tight wraps right here. About as tight as your thread will allow. You know, this is a 70 denier, so I can't yank down terribly hard on it, but I've got enough wraps right there to, to hold that in pretty good. Now, if you were using the straw technique where you just put a slit in a drinking straw, you could pull that back and hold it back. But again, I haven't really found that too necessary. I just take my whip finish tool and then kind of pull it back with my fingers as I wrap about a three or four turn whip finish right here. And I'll do two of them because you don't have a whole lot of room for head cement here. So I'm just gonna do two whip finishes right here. And then I'll show you where we have to put the head cement. So let's go ahead and snip that off. Now just kind of play around with your head. Get it going a little bit forward, almost like an elk hair caddis. I'm gonna cut it a little bit forward of the eye, give it a little flat top right there. And that's it. That's your head. So it's a pretty cool looking fly. Very easy to tie. Oh yeah, where do we want to put the head cement? Just a tiny drop right there. Not gonna to try to wrap it all the way around and just be mindful that you don't get in your eye and you don't let this chenille wick all up in there. So there you go, a cooper bug or devil bug or doodle bug, whatever you call it in your neck of the woods. Pretty simple pattern to tie, can be very effective. So that's it my friends, I appreciate y'all watching. Take care and we'll see you next time.